Okay, this is my homemade bender. I've had a lot of questions about it, so I'm going to walk you through it. The bender is made with two mandrels, a large mandrel and a smaller mandrel. The large mandel, mandrel has to be sized to the radius of bend you want. We wanted a 10 inch radius bend, so we cut a 20 inch diameter circle, and that'll give us the 10 inch radius bend we wanted. Uh, each one is cut from two halves of three quarter inch thick plywood. So you can see there's two pieces here. And you basically cut them to the diameter that you want. Uh, drill a hole directly through the center of both halves and put a bolt in place to pin them. Then once they were bolted together, we ran them across the belt sander to sort of refine the edge until we had the perfect circle we had drawn with our uh, large compass and pencil line. Once you've got that set, then to cut the cove, we used a uh, 7 eighths inch round nose router bit. I can show you the router bit here from Rockler. Looks like that. Two cutting edges on it. You put that into your router table and you set the depth to exactly half of the cove size you want to cut. So we wanted the 7 eighths inch cove, so we set the depth, the height to 7 sixteenths which is half of seven eighths. Then we fed the circles directly into the router bit until you get the depth that you want. Now we wanted um, not to cut a cove that is exactly half because you've got to allow some clearance here between your two mandrels when they turn. So we fed it in about five sixteenths instead of seven sixteenths and used a board over the router bit to keep it from going deeper than we wanted. Once it's fed in, then we drilled straight through the center. We're only feeding half at a time, not both halves. Once it was in, we drilled straight through the center and put a bolt in place to kind of pin it. Here you can see where I drilled into my router top for the smaller mandrel that we made. That's seven inch diameter. And we bolted it in place and then turned the router back on and slowly rotated the piece to cut a perfectly symmetrical cove all the way around that half. You repeat that with the other side, then bolt the two halves together, and you'll end up with a pretty much perfect cove, 7 eighths uh, wide by 5 sixteenths inch deep on each of the two mandrels that we made. Now this is obviously for bending 7 eighths inch diameter tubing. If you have a different diameter tubing, you can modify your cove and buy a different bit, of course, uh, to suit your purposes. We made a strap to hold the tubing in place, and you can see it here. This is three quarter inch wide by eighth inch thick aluminum. Just kind of bent it over a piece of seven eighths diameter tubing uh, until it was approximately the right shape. Then I put a piece of tubing in there and adjusted it to a snug fit, drilled two holes and bolted it into place. You can see I put degree markings here uh, using a protractor for zero through 90 degrees. We knew we wouldn't bend more than 90 degrees. When I bent my first piece of tubing, I bent it to what I thought would be the correct mark. Then I took it out and measured it, and I found that I was off by about 15 degrees. There's some lag here from where the bend, uh, where the uh, piece attaches to where the bend actually starts, which is about back here. So I recalibrated and wrote in pencil the new marks, which are all 15 degrees lower. Put the piece back in and turned to that, and I found I got an exact bend, which had a uh, allowed for the spring back in the stainless tubing and every subsequent piece was perfectly repeatable as well. The arm is just made out of some scrap tubing I had laying around. I think this came from an old trampoline. Uh, you feed in your tubing. I fed the tubing in with three inches to spare because I knew I was going to be putting splines in later and I wanted to make sure I had at least three inches of straight unbent tubing. So I fed each piece in exactly three inches from this edge here and then began my turn. And as you rotate it to whatever desired mark, um, you'll find each piece comes out dead on right. Uh, this block here is just to stabilize the tail end of the rest of the tubing so that it can't spring out and mess up this angle here. Uh, I put that on at the last minute just by setting it to what looked like about a straight across uh, line perpendicular to a line between the two central uh, axis points here. Highly recommended. I thought it was an extremely successful bending operation. Very easy to use. Uh, I've already bent all my pieces, or I'd bend a piece for you. It takes a little uh, elbow grease, but the bending goes very, very smoothly in probably about 
50 pounds of force maybe to bend the tubing is all you need. If you put your hip into it, it's quite easy. Best of luck. If you have any questions, let me know.